and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee O Lord
Señor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can someone bless the Lord this morning? Amen. Can you bless the Lord this morning? Because he has been good to you. Amen. Can you bless the Lord this morning? Because he got you through yesterday, throughout the week, and through the hot heat, but he has carried you over. Can you bless the Lord? I shouldn't have to beg you to bless the Lord. You should be willing to bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Can your mom praise God this morning? Amen. On Father's Day, can you praise your father this morning? Can your soul and your spirit say, Abba, Father, we love you and we praise you. We bless you because you have been good to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that worship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give a hand. Hallelujah. for are welcome and leading us in worship this morning with an honor, giving all honor to God and glory to God. This morning we welcome. Uh, we just thank you so much for just sacrificing. Love, God love when you sacrifice for him. Amen. He don't, he don't like for us to set it on a shelf. When he give us something, he wants us to give. Amen. Amen. Because that, as you give, he gives you more. Amen. So thank you for giving as he gives to you. And thank you all for giving. Amen. Let's give a hand clap for all our guests that welcome. Praise the Lord. We are grateful, amen, this morning on a Sunday. It might be hot in there, but Jesus, he keeps us cool, amen. He keeps us cool. Thank God for his covering, his mercy. Thank you for joining us on, on our website this morning, YouTube. Instagram, we thank you for joining Lily of the Valley Worship Center this morning, amen. It's going to be a blessing today, so hang in there. Amen. I hope y'all hope you have some expectancy today, amen, to hear a word from heaven. Amen. God bless you all, men and ladies. Uh, Father's Day, happy, lady, uh, happy Father's Day to all. I'm just going to be brief right here. Amen. I'm going to be reading out of 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And they know God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Here is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation for our sins. Amen. Watch this. Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen. Then it says, no man has seen God at any time. But if we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. We know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ declared the Father's love to the whole world. Amen. And because God dwells in us, we can also declare God to the world. Amen. But it says, Love one another, for God is love. Amen. How many of you know that God loves you today? Can you thank him for loving you? You know what he told me to say? It's not what you do that you can win my love, but I love you just because. Whether you cross your T's or dot, don't dot your eyes, I still love you. God said, you can't work for my love. 
I just love you for who you are. I said, thank you, thank you, Lord. That's just not for me. That's for all of you. That's, you know what? That's for the whole world. But he said, he that believeth in my son also, amen, is a child of God, amen. God want to welcome us. God want to love us. God want to do all the great things that he has in his heart, and it's hard for us, amen. So let's, love, let's, let's thank God for that love this morning, that because of his love, he woke us up this morning, amen. He gave us another, uh, he gave us another day, amen, to draw closer to him, amen. He loved the praises of his people, amen. We talked about last week how faith moves the heart of God. So when we have faith in the love of God in us, we love one another. Yeah. Amen. And the world see God in us when we love one another. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to, um, those who have sent in prayer requests, thank you for sending in prayer requests. We are praying for you. We are praying for you. And we are, we are trusting in God for prayers to be answered. Whether it's deliverance, whether it's freedom, whether, well, whatever it is, restoration, health, comfort, strength, whatever it is, God is able to bring it to pass. Amen. So if I, let's, let, can you join me with prayer? Let's go to before the throne of grace. Amen. This morning. Father, we are in this place because of you. We're here because of you. We have breath because of you. We have clothes on our back because of you. Lord, we believe because of you. And not of ourselves. We want to thank you for having, for blessing us with your presence, first of all. For your presence means the world to us. <laughs> Nothing else even matters, God. We're here to worship you to seek thy face, to knock on the door, to give you praise, to hear from you, to learn, to grow, to draw near to you, Lord. We're all in one accord, Father, just to worship you and adore you, to magnify you, and just to enjoy you. But most of all, just to say thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. Have your way in this service today. Bless the ears and the eyes. Bless the hearts. Move among us, Father. Settle in us in this place. And those who weren't able to make it, you can touch them where they are, Father. You are perfectiveness, Lord. And we truly appreciate you. We are grateful for all that you've done for us in this day. In Jesus' name. And let the church of God say, thank God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so once again, we got a word today. Amen. Amen. We got a word today. And I know that this word is for all of us. Amen. I'm excited. We, uh, we know that our pastor will bring a word. Amen. Amen. That God gives him a word. Amen. God say, appreciate the word I give you. Because with that word is life. Amen. So we're without excuse when we hit the word from God. Amen. He's given his word because he loves us. He wants us to do right. He wants the best for us. Amen. He sets us up to be a winner. To be victorious. That's what he does. He sets us up to be victorious. Amen. So with that, woo, my pastor show up right here. Let's give a warm welcome before I do a pastor. Amen. He's sharp. He's sharp. He is sharp. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you have a reason to praise the Lord? God has been good. And I just want you to help me sing this song that you don't know, you don't know it yet. But I'm going to try to teach it to you. 
If I can get just a little more volume on this microphone, I'll be able to make it through this song. I want you to help me sing it. It simply says, I got a reason to praise him. I'm going to praise his name.
morning. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Oh, I got a reason to praise Him. I got a reason. Do you have a reason? Because you fix something. Because it's been so of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Any hallelujah people here today? Come on and open your mouth and say thank you Jesus. Come on open your mouth and say thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Father in the name of Jesus we thank you. We praise you and we honor you because you're God. We take no credit for what thou about to do. We give you all the glory and the credit is thine. Word, our mouths give us what to say and how to say and use us in a mighty way. Take the hot coals off the altar. Place them upon thy lips to purify thy word. Hide me behind the cross that you may be seen and not I. And God, we ask you to bless, heal, deliver, and set free on this day. And God, we will thank you and we will give you glory. And we will give you praise and we will give you honor on this day. Is there anyone here who want to give him a little honor and give him a little praise? Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. God woke you this morning. I don't know about you, but I got enough heat here in Palm Springs, 123 degrees. So I'm not going to live in hell and go to hell. I, but I want to thank him and praise him and give him glory. Is there anybody in here want to give God glory? Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. God is good all the time and all the time. God is most certain. While you're standing, while you're standing, would you open your Bibles to the book of Genesis? Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and verse 27. When you have it, say amen. Amen. If you don't have it, say praise the Lord. Amen. Got to wait on the praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to send you all back. Bishop, you remember Bible drill, Bishop? You remember Bible drill? Yeah, we're going to send them back to Bible drill. Hallelujah. So we praise the Lord for Jesus. If you have your Bible, if you have your Bible, put your finger in your Bible. Now, Genesis ought to be able to be able, easy to find. It's the first book in the Bible, first chapter of the Bible. Take you that long to find Genesis. Lord, help us. Uh, <laughs> lift that Bible and say, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I am, I am not what you say I am, but I am what it says I am. I can have not what you say I can have, but I can have what it says I can have. I can do not what you say I can do, but I can do what it says I can do. And my Bible says, and my Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. If you really believe that, shout hallelujah. Oh, sounds like you believe it. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and verse 27, he says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth up on the earth. Aha, uh -huh, let him have dominion. Yeah, dominion. Mm -hmm. 
over everything yeah. on the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then he says in verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we want to give high honor uh, to our Bishop, Bishop Samuel Morgan. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you. And his lovely wife is there sitting by Lady J. Amen. Amen. Sister Moore, she, she's normally sitting up here, but she don't like to be in that camera right there. So she sit back there so loud. But if you want to come up closer, that's fine. But bring Lady J with you. All right. And so we praise God for Bishop Morgan, who served for years as our chaplain of the Churches of God in Christ everywhere. And we praise God for him and his labor and his service. And so while he was down, he wanted to come visit with us. And I said, come on by. He said, well, I ain't going to be dressed. I said, don't worry. This is casual time. For I'm only wearing a suit because uh, I remember what happened last Father's Day. The last Father's Day. Mother Wilder is here today. Last Father's Day. Uh, I got a new watch last Father's Day. Yeah. Y'all remember now, don't you? Huh? And so I'm thinking we're casual wear, so she don't want me to wear this new watch on and a, a casual wear. But I come to find out it was Father's Day, and you needed to wear your new watch. And so I said, well, okay, I will remember next time. So I got a new suit. And so I, even though I know it's casual day, I said, I better put on that new suit. But next week I'm going back casual. I, yeah, I, you know, because that dog house get a little tough, you know, it get a little tough, you know, and then, so uh, I wanted to make sure I didn't get in the do dog house, but let's praise God for Bishop, amen, and to our deacon, amen, let's praise God for him, and to our minister, amen, and to the fragrance of this house, none other than Lady J, come on, put those hands together, and praise God for our mother, amen, mother Wilder is here, amen, thank God for Demetra Davis, we thank God for her and her son, been with us on today, been knowing her for years. Oh, you're going to have to get her back, Lady J. She has a testimony. She has, oh, Lady J just got her checkup 11 years now clean from cancer. Yes, she has a testimony too. Amen. But 11 years, so we praise the Lord that the Lord has, has certainly blessed her. And to all of God's people, Amen. And all the LOVNs, may the Lord bless you and praise God for you. We just love you with the love of the Lord and we, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is most certainly good. Let me get into this word. Is that all right? Let me get this word on today. I want to preach uh, to you from this text on today, if you would allow me, just for the next fleeting moments. Help me say, back to God's image. Uh, I want to preach to you back to God's image. And as a subtext, since this is men's day, I want to say men back to God's image. And so men back to God's image. Can I preach this thing today? Are you going to pray for me? I said, are you going to pray for me? All right. If you can't pray for me, pray with me. All right. Let's do that. All right. In what ways are we made in God's image? God obviously did not create us exactly like himself because God has no physical body. Instead, we are reflections of God's glory. We will never be totally like God because he is our supreme creator. But we do have the ability to reflect his character in his love, patience, forgiveness, kindness, and uh, faithfulness. Knowing that we are made in God's image and thus share many of his characteristics, provide a solid basics for self-worth. Human worth is not based on possessions, achievement, physical attractiveness, or public acclaim. Instead, it is based on being made in God's image. Woo! 
Oh, yes, as we welcome our Facebook uh, uh, crowd on today, we want you to know it's not about what you've achieved. We want you to know it's all about you being in God's image. You that are on other social media with us today, we praise God for you and thank you for being a part of us. But on today, we want you to become a part of the image of God because we bear God's image. We can feel positive about ourselves. Criticizing or downgrading ourselves is criticizing what God has made and the abilities he has given unto us. Hey, don't look at your neighbor, but tell yourself, say, Sell, I am somebody, and I don't need Jesse Jackson to tell me that. God has told you that. And when you criticize you, you are criticizing what God has made. I wish I had a church in here today. I feel pretty good. And so when you, with others, you are good at not letting others criticize you. But when are you going to get to the point where you don't criticize yourself? You are what God made you. You can't be any different from what God made you. you allow, God allowed you to go through some things. And some of those things has molded you into your character. But don't you know when God chose you, he knew that you were going to go through some things that was going to mold your character. And so when he assigned you to do something for him, he he knew exactly what he was getting. Oh, 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 let me say it like this. Your husband may not know exactly what he's getting. Your wife may not know exactly what they're getting. Oh, they in puppy love mode right now. But when God chooses you, he knows exactly what he's getting. He knows if you're going to stay with the race. He knows when you're going to fail him. He knows when you're not going to dot all your I's. He knows when you're not going to cross all your T's. But one thing he knows, if he gave it to you, you're going to complete it. It may take a little time, but that's all right. He knows if he gave it to you, it's a done deal. And so look, he said, knowing that you are a person of worth helps you love God. You love him and to know him personally and to make a valuable contribution to those around you. So as we look at the text, as we move on and we look at the text and we go to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now, from the dust of the ground implies that there is nothing fancy about the chemical elements making up of our bodies. The body is a lifeless shell until God's being is alive with his breath of life. When God removes his life-breathing breath, our bodies once again return to dust. Our life and worth therefore come from God's spirit. Our life and worth comes from God's spirit. Many boast of their achievements and abilities as though they were the originator of their own strength. Others feel worthless because their abilities do not stand out. But in reality, our worth comes not from our achievement, but from God of the universe who chose to give us the, the mysterious and miraculous gift of life. And so now you've got to value it. Listen, my brothers and sisters, value life. Value life. You know that uh, you are here for a reason, but you need to value life. You value what God is to you. Oh, the problem with us today is that we got too many people looking to be approved. You go around looking for folks to approve. 
approve you. Uh, you search for folks to approve you. But, but I got some news for you today. Uh, do you not know the person that approve you today uh, will stab you in the back on tomorrow? Uh, they will approve you today, uh, but they will get on the phone and gossip about you later. Uh, they will approve you today, uh, but they will get on Facebook uh, and talk about you and run you down like a dog. Uh, but I'm here to let you know uh, you got to approve of yourself. Uh, even David encouraged himself. Uh, every now and then you got to encourage yourself. I said encourage yourself. Get in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Fix yourself up. Put your makeup on. Pat yourself on the chest. And say, my, 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 my. When God made me, he made something wonderful. So, so watch this. Why did he do it? Why did he do it? Why did he do it? Because the Bible says, can I come on? Come on, come on, come on. The Bible says uh, in Romans 8 and 29, Romans 8 and 29, he says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God's purpose for people was not an afterthought. <laughs> Let me try that again. When God thought about you, it was not an afterthought. Uh-huh. Yeah, you you know when somebody is, is trying to tell you happy Father's Day and it was three days later. Then in other words, it was an afterthought. You didn't think about it uh, when the time, I can't get no help up in here. You didn't think about oh, when it was your birthday or when it was your anniversary. It was an afterthought. It came later. But when God made you, it was purposely done. He knew what to put in you. He knew how much strength to put in you. He knew what behavior to put in you. He he know what kind of attitude to put in you. God knows what he is doing. Woo! Am I all right so far? And guess what? It was settled before the foundation of the world. It was already settled. Help me say it was already settled. God, people, people are to serve and honor God. If you believe in Christ, you can rejoice in the fact that God has always known you. God's love is eternal. His wisdom and power are supreme. He will guide and protect you until you one day stand in his presence. I don't know about you, but that's the day I'm waiting on. I want to stand in his presence. That's why you go through what you go through. That's why you deal with what you deal with. That's why you came to the altar and gave your life to the Lord. That's why you said, yes, Lord. Then that's why you got filled with his Holy Spirit. Because you knew that there were some things down here you were going to have to deal with. But I'm going to deal with them because I've got to see Jesus face to face. Do I have a witness? Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13 and 14, he says. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 13 and 14. He says, and the Lord shall make thee the head. Woo! Ha, ha, ha. Ah, can I stop right there? Can I stop? The Lord shall make thee the head. Uh-huh. And not the tail. Oh, I can't, oh, I can't get nobody to help me. Uh, uh, see, that's what's wrong with so many people today. You've been dragging your lip on the ground so long uh, that you don't know God made you the head mm -hmm, and not the tail. Uh, uh, so he says, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Did you get the book? Uh, he says, if that, he said, if that thou hearken unto the commandment. Now watch this. There's a condition to this. And that you got to hearken to the commandments of the Lord thou God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And then he says in verse 14, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand 
uh -huh, or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. So God has already created you. God has already made you. I know you were born in sin and I know you were shaped in iniquity, but the Lord has given us a way out to get back to praise in him and to get back to the image of God that if thou would just confess with thy mouth on the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead if he's knocking at the door will you please open and let him in please don't close the door before he comes all the way in but let God all the way in do I have a witness here? And then he says, watch this. He says in Psalms 8 and 6. He says, Psalms 8 and 6. He says, thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. I'm about to, I'm about to close here. But before I close, you better put your seatbelt on. Because I'm going to turn a curve doing 100 miles an hour. And it's a 90 degree turn. So you better get ready for this one. If you can't do nothing else, put your hard hat on. Because. I'm fishing to come at you and I'm not going to try to miss you. And so he says, now watch this brothers, watch this brothers. I got to talk to you just for a moment. God has given men tremendous authority. He's given you dominion over everything on the earth. I didn't get that saying yes sir when I was talking earlier when they had dominion. I didn't get all that then. But now that I'm talking to the men, I'm going to get some yes sirs that he gives us trouble tremendous authority but with great authority comes great responsibility God when he gives us authority he gave us responsibility and we got to be able to know what our authority how to be responsible with what God has done for us and so God had gave Adam 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 I'm not going to talk about Eve too much today uh, but she had a hand in it she had a hand in it uh, but he talked to Adam and told Adam, he said, listen in Genesis chapter 3, verse 3, he says, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. He had given this commandment unto Adam. Now I have given you everything. I've given you dominion over everything. You are the one that I have created. Oh uh, yeah, let me say that for a moment right now. Man is the one he created. Woman is the one he made. Because God put his creation on the ground and drew in the ground and blew breath into his body, but then turned around and put him to sleep and took a rib out of his side and made women. That's why he's the head and not the tail. I can't get no amen to it. It's the book, it's the book, it's the book. It's the book, but here, but look, man, I have to let the onus is on us. The world would be better if we took responsibility of what God has given unto us. It's up to us to turn this world around, but we've got to be doing what God has told us to do. So we got to go back to his image. Am I all right, Bishop? Watch this, he says in Genesis 3, chapter verse 6. 3, verse 6. He says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant, uh, pleasant uh, to the eye and, the, and a tree to be desired uh, to make one wise, uh, she took of the fruit. Uh-huh. She took of of the fruit and did eat and then gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat is that the book is that the book all right one of the realities of sin watch this is that it affects spreads mm -hmm. i said one of the realities of sin is that it of its effects 
spread. Uh -huh. After Eve's sin, uh, she involved Adam in her wrongdoing. Uh, but when we do something wrong, uh, often we try, we try to relieve our guilt uh, by involving someone else. Uh, like toxic waste that spills in the river, sin swiftly spreads. Uh, and recognize uh, and confess your sins to God uh, before you are tempted to pollute those uh, that are around you. Uh, in other words, uh, when you begin to blame and show guilt, uh, then that begins to spread. Uh, because now Eve has got Adam uh, into her sin. Uh, but when God came to Adam uh, and Adam told him, you naked. Uh, he said, who told you that? Uh, now Eve now blaming Adam. Uh, but now Adam said, this woman uh, that you got, I can't get nobody help me here. Uh, this woman that you gave me, uh, oh, she beguiled me. Uh, then she said, well, the serpent, uh, he beguiled me. Uh, when are you going to take onus for yourself? Uh, are you big and bad enough to fight? Uh, you big and bad enough to roll your hair up? Uh, you big and bad enough to take off your earrings? Uh, but when you go on up to what you have done, The reason why God can't deliver us uh, is because you're still too busy blaming everybody else. Uh, you did it. Uh, I don't care if they told you to do it. You did it. Uh, if you know eating hot dogs make you sick, uh, I don't care who give you one. Uh, don't eat it. Because uh, if you eat it, you're going to get sick. Uh, when you get sick, don't come up here talking about uh, Mother Wilder made me eat that hot dog. Uh, ain't nobody making you do nothing. Uh, if you did it, you did it on your own. And then you want to pollute everybody else that's around you. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. And so look what happened. Look what happened. As we continue in Genesis chapter 3, I'm almost done, but I have to throw this hard hat out. He says, watch this, in Genesis 3, uh, verse 23 and 24, he says, now look at what you've done, Adam. Look what you did. I gave the commandment to you. I made you in my image. You should do what I tell you to do, not what Eve told you to do. Oh, oh wait a minute, while I got you hollering amen, then the, the same principle go to you. Why aren't you following God's commandments? Why are you letting the devil tell you to do otherwise of what the Lord has told you to do? Because God, when you get to the pearly gates, he going to say, what did I tell you to do? Woo! So look at what happened. I got to hurry up. Uh, look at what happened in verse 23. He disobeys God. He had the authority, but he had responsibility. He disobeyed God. And so verse 23 says, therefore the Lord sent him forth from the Garden of Eden. Uh-huh. And let me just say verse 24. Let me just read the first uh, uh, six words. And, and I'll just say the first six words. You can read the rest of it later. But verse 24 puts it in context. He said, so he drove out the man. He disobeyed. He drove him out. And then watch this. He put a cherubim at the eastern gate where he can't come back until he come back right. That's what's wrong with some folks today. They want to come back, but they don't want to come back right. You want to come back with your mess. You want to come back with your attitude. You want to come back with your behavior. But when you come back, you got to remember God said that all things have passed away. And behold, all things. Has become uh, new. So, what did he do? What did he do? Minister, you better grab my coat here. But what did he do? When, watch this, he 
separated himself. Watch, watch this. God didn't leave him. He left God. So let me tell you all my viewers today, quit talking about the Lord left you. You left the Lord. And God don't want you until you come back right. Am I all right? You might have to open that door, minister, but am I all right? So watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. When Adam sinned and was kicked out, look what happened. Job tells us what happened. Job says in Job 14 and 1, man that is born of a woman is of a few days, but watch this, and full of trouble. I didn't say it. The book said it. Let me tell you what it says in the amplified version. It says man who was born of a woman is short-lived and full of turmoil. So every since Adam has messed up, man has been full of trouble. Yeah. Uh, man, yeah, I'm talking to y'all today. Man is full of trouble. And ever since then, man has had a troubled life. But watch this. The troubled life is not because of God. The troubled life is because you left his image. What? Oh, Lord, help me right here. Help me right here. Security, you got me? Help me right here. Troubled life. One, you was a hard-headed little fella. Mischievous. Disobedient. I can't get nobody to help me here. Promiscuous. Adulterous. I can't get no help in here. The women ought to be able to say, man, you landed in jail on drugs, on alcohol, abuse your wife, misuse your children, deadbeat daddy. I can't get no help up in here. You gave your life to Satan ever since you've been kicked out. But I, 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 I know a man. I said, I know a man that sits high and looks low and got you by his hand. Somebody shall go away. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Watch this. You did some things wrong. I said, you did some things wrong. Can I get some of the brothers to help me say, yes, I did. Because pastor is in the same boat you in. That I did some things wrong. But this is how Adam and Eve broke their relationship with God. They became convinced that their way is better than God's way. They became self-conscious and hid themselves. They tried to excuse and defend themselves. To build a relationship with God, you got to reverse these steps. You got to understand that we got to go back until we get back to the image of God. We must drop our excuses and self-defense. We must stop trying to hide from God. We must become convinced that God's way is better than our way. And that's why God says in John 16 and 33, he said, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have 
overcome the world. Yes. We got to get back to the image of God. The way God made us. Because Jesus said that I am your advocate. All you need to do is just come back unto me. Say yes, somebody. Let me close with this little story. I had some work done on my house. And in doing the work on my house, the electrician, he had to cut a hole in the wall. And after he closed the cut a hole in the wall, he put the hole back together again. He plastered over the top of the sheetrock. But now it's a different color. The wall is gray, but the plaster part is white. So I got to now go get some paint and paint over that area that now been disturbed. And so what did I do, Deke? I had a little paint in the bucket. I went out and got the paint and I just rolled over the area of where he had done the repairs. But when I stood back and looked, it wasn't matching. It didn't look right. So I said, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going down to Home Depot. I got down to Home Depot. I took the top with me and I told the painter, I need you to match this paint. He matched it as good as he could. I got back home. I put that paint on the wall. And when I let it dry, I can see that it did not match. So I went back to Home Depot. I said, man, you got to make this a little darker. I got to do better than this. So he redid what he done the first time. I took it back deep and I was patching the painting over where I had painted before. I waited until it dried and it still didn't match. But then here come little smart Alec, Sister Eve Lady J. She told me go back to the maker who made the paint. Home Depot didn't make the paint. It was Sherman Williams that made the paint. And now I went to Sherman Williams. I said, here is your cold. Can you give me the paint? I go to Sherman Williams. But instead of me painting a spot, I painted the whole wall. And when the paint dried, it matched the rest of the paint. The reason why we can't make it is because you're going to the wrong store. Go back. Go back to the maker. Go back to the image of God. Watch God make you over again. Watch God build you up again. Watch God turn your life around. Watch God plant your feet on solid ground. Go back to the one major. Go back to the one delivered you. Go back to the one set you free. He's able. Somebody help me say he's able. He's able to make you over again. If you just come to him, he's able to wipe over your spots. He's able to make you blend in again. He's able now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Look 
Look at your neighbor and say, yes, he will. Look at your neighbor and say, yes, he will. Look at that neighbor and say, I know he will. Because he did it for me. I say, he did it for me. It doesn't matter how low you sink. I serve a God will get you back to his image. Just go back to the maker. Go back to the one that loved you from the beginning. Go back to the one that set you up not to be a failure, but to be a success. God told me to tell you, I never created you to be a failure. I know you're going to go through some things, but I will pick you up. back to God's image. D, you got to go back to the image that he made you. Never was for you to push drugs, be in jail. Brother T, never was for you to be on the street. Bishop, Whatever you did, it wasn't there to kill you. But if Jesus rose from the grave, he's trying to tell us he went back to the image. He went back to the maker. And the maker, on that third day morning, raised him from the grave. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, death can't hold you. Death can't hold you. It may seem like this trial is going to kill you, but the trial can't hold you. Say it. It can't hold you. It can't hold you. I say it can't hold you. If you just go back to the maker. That's all you need to do. He made you. He knows all about you. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is most certainly good. Go back to God's image. Go back to the maker. Go back to him. Give me something soft. Give me something. The people that are watching, there's nothing you've done that God cannot heal. That God cannot deliver. All he wants you to do is just come home. I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know you're sad. But I'm here to let you know that the God that we serve, if you just come to him, just walk over to him. His arms are stretched wide. Say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest.
Mother Wilder, I thought I, that last time, really. And see, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you got me. Bishop, you know too. You construction too. Really, Bishop? The last one. No, watch this. I, I never told Lady J this, but I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a reveal today. It's Father's Day. So she's going to argue with me. She can't argue with me today. But the real reason why I said, watch this, Carmilla. Well, this time I'm just going to paint the whole wall. Because if the whole wall is painted, I don't care what color it is. It ain't the color. Ain't gonna, everything going to match. I'm a, see, that's, let me stop there with me. See, that's what's wrong with some of us too many just trying to patch. You, you trying to patch. And then when your first patch don't work, you go back and patch again. So watch this, Bishop. I said, watch this. I'll fool her this time. If I do get the wrong paint, at least the whole wall yeah. is the same color. <laughs> but when I went back to the maker, and I put that paint on the wall, okay? And wait, Deke, Deke, watch this. I'm smart, right, Deke? I did it at night. <laughs> She said, you're the only man I know painted at night. Because I'm hoping that when she get up in the morning, she only look at the whole wall and don't look at the wall connecting the wall. But lo and behold, I got out that morning. The paint was matching. The other paint on the side. Then I stuck my chest out, look. I told her I got this. I told her I got this. That's the way it happens sometimes. But if we go back to the maker, he knows how to make you over again. Watch this. And never leave a blemish. Quit patching and go back to the image of what God has made for you. I got to close. You that are viewing us through social media today. If you want God to make you over again, I want you to say these words after me. I want you to say these words. You know, make me over again. Make me over again. We'll sing that song you sang. All right. All right. Watch this. Watch this. Then I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, everybody repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I acknowledge my wrongs. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day morning, God the Father raised him from the dead. Now, Lord, I open my heart. I receive you into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If you said that words with me, you're on your way back to the maker. Going back to who made you and who created you. The doors are open. You can come and be with us as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. If you want to be a blessing to this ministry, use these platforms. You can use these platforms. You can go to our website, www.lovwc.org. You can also go to, uh, and when you go there, excuse me, push give. When you push give, you can give by PayPal, you can give by your credit card. You can also use Giblify. Use Giblify, look up Lily of the Valley Worship Center. And you can give by that platform. You can also give by Cash App. The dollar sign, L-O-V, 
1779. Or you can just go old school like me and Sister Bev, and that's P.O. Box 2363, Palm Springs, California, 92263. Sister Bev, our partner is here, Mother Wilder. She ain't saying nothing or whatever. You can send it to the P.O. Box and be a blessing. Listen, we got a few more things that we got to do here in the ministry, but we're going to go off the air. And we want to thank you for coming and being with us on today. Keep singing, sis. We want to thank you for coming and being with us on today as we minister the word of the Lord on today. Go back to God's image. Go back to the maker. Brothers, men, it doesn't matter what you have done in the past. God will forgive your past. And you can walk with him if you go back to the image that God made you in the first place. So may the blessings of the Lord be upon you. May God's blessings keep you. In Jesus' name, peace.